There are many reasons one might have to make a new oil pan. Maybe you have oil starvation issues, or you need more ground clearance, or you need to add oil capacity. Maybe you tilted the engine of your Dodge Viper back to line up the transmission output with the Jeep solid rear axle you installed. Whatever the reason, making an oil pan is pretty straightforward and super easy now that you can get low-cost laser-cut parts. In fact, if you have a welder, it's probably cheaper than getting an aftermarket pan, and you can make it exactly how you want it. It's actually pretty hard to mess this one up. I mean, I did. But you don't have to. I've modified a handful of oil pans in the past and made a new one for my S600, kind of. This is more of an oil plate than a pan, but it did the job. Oil pans are pretty basic. It's usually just a perimeter with several fastener holes and a volume to hold the oil, made with stamped steel or cast aluminum. Also, a drain plug and something inside to kind of separate the spinning crankshaft from the pool of oil. The Viper oil pan has another complication. Usually your oil pickup is a tube coming down from the engine toward the bottom of the oil pan. Well, the Viper has the pickup built into the oil pan. It has this screen on the bottom, the oil is pulled through that, and then it goes through this cast tube in the pan and into the engine block here, which presumably has an oil pump above it. If you've been following the build, you know I had to tilt the engine back about 5 degrees to get the transmission output pointed at the rear axle. If you haven't been following the build, let me catch you up. I had to tilt the engine back about 5 degrees to get the transmission output pointed at the rear axle. If the Viper had that pickup tube I was talking about, I could have just extended it back and had the pickup in the rear of the pan. But since it's cast into the pan, I kind of have to make a new pan. So let's do it. The simple design here is to angle the mounting flange back 5 degrees with the engine, but modify the bottom of the pan to be parallel with the ground. This would actually work just fine, but I don't want to do it for a couple of reasons. One, I unnecessarily overcomplicate everything. It's a problem, but unavoidable. Two, I want to maintain the volume of oil in the pan. Dodge switched to a larger oil pan in the 2000 model year Vipers. This one is a 99, but some previous owner swapped in the larger pan. This is good because these things are worth about a thousand bucks, so I can actually make money by making a new pan. I'm not going to be doing any high G sustained cornering in this car, but there will be lots of off-road sloshing, so I'm going to go with a larger volume. I got the measurements from the old pan by 3D scanning it. You can definitely do it the old-fashioned way if you want. All these holes on the side are in a line. You just need to measure the distance between them. If you're careful and you use some calipers, you can get pretty close. Actually, probably closer than I could get with a scanner. To do this, I'm going to take this shelf here and angle it down. Actually, all the way down to here. This added area here should make up for this lost area here. And with a dipstick located up front, it should still read correctly. But I will double-check this after with the prescribed 2.5 gallons of oil. I will be using Motul 0W40 synthetic oil for this. Motul was kind enough to sponsor this build with some fluids, which is great because that's what I was going to buy anyway. You probably notice a little notch here. This part behind is the sump. This is where the oil will be picked up from. I'll have a tube running from here forward and up to the pickup in the engine block. I had originally thought about doing this with a round tube bent with a tubing bender, but I didn't do this. For one, it would have a big radius, which means I'd need to radius the pan here with a bend, and I don't want to do that. Also, it seems kind of flimsy to just have a tube attached here and here, but otherwise just hanging out at the lowest part of the engine. So I decided to get some square tube. I can get a slightly heavier wall and tack weld it along the seam, making it pretty strong overall. Now, some of you are looking at this and thinking that as soon as I press the accelerator, the oil is going to slosh back here, and as soon as I press the brakes, it's going to slosh up here. But no, because I am using little flappy rubber doors. Little flappy rubber doors are great. They're flappy, so oil can go one way but not the other, and they're really easy to install. You just need a slot and a hole. So I made two walls, one in front of the pickup and one behind, both with three little flappy rubber doors. Side to side is a different story. The Viper has a windage tray that kind of scrapes the oil off the crankshaft and gently directs it down into the oil pan, keeping a barrier between the crankshaft and the pool of oil below. Because of the rotation of the crankshaft, the windage tray spits out the oil to the right side of the engine, so the oil drains through these five holes. Most of it, anyway. Some comes through the front. In any case, instead of having the pickup in the middle with the rubber flappy doohickeys on the side, I'm going to shift it over to the right side of the pan. You may have already noticed this with the tube going to the right instead of the center. With the sump offset, I'll just need one wall here with a couple of rubber doors. I'm going to extend this wall forward and back, but at an angle, so hopefully it will funnel the oil into the pickup during right-hand corners. I'm also going to have these walls extended all the way and put a couple more flappy doors there. And that's it. That is the oil pan. Except for the drain. We'll put that, uh, here. I almost forgot, this oil pan comes with a baffle. It's another piece of sheet metal that goes between the oil and the windage tray. It's kind of like a roof for those walls that close off the oil pickup area. 
I need to make a new one since this old one is made to bolt to the old pan. You can see the basic idea here. Those five outlets of the windage tray dump right above these three holes. I can do the same thing here where I have three holes above these three areas. I'll put one large one in the middle since that's where I want most of the oil to go. Now if you've seen my video where I made a dry sump, you know that it's important to have geometry that gets the air bubbles out of oil as it drips down, and slots and circles are great at that. Even better when you combine slots and circles into this perfectly engineered shape for de-aeration. So I added some of those slots and circles to my baffle. <laughs> the other side I took a little more seriously. I did a fluid flow optimization using some CFD software to maximize the flow of the oil while minimizing mixed gases. I just fed it the parameters and it spit out the optimized geometry, which is this. Huh. Weird. Before we get to manufacturing this pan, we need to design it to be built, and colorful blocks are not going to cut it. I've had a lot of people message me and ask me to do a video on how to use CAD, and I haven't done that for a couple of reasons. One is that I've been doing CAD for a long time, so I'm not really sure what's obvious and intuitive and what isn't. Also, I have two decades of bad habits built up. My CAD model for the Viper is a disaster. It's like walking into the house of a hoarder. They claim to know where everything is, but to everybody else, it just looks like a bomb went off. I looked around and found a good comprehensive course on CAD modeling. HP Academy added their 3D modeling course a few months ago. I went through part of this course, specifically sheet metal assemblies and analysis. It is very good, and I joined them as an affiliate. So if you're looking to learn CAD and support the channel, check the link in the description and sign up for the course. There is a 35% off code also in the description. Anyway, CAD. We're making this thing out of sheet metal, so we need to turn this into several flat sheets. There is, unfortunately, no simple button to press to make this happen. You just have to go to each side, start a sketch, and draw out your flat sheet. Then go to an adjacent side and draw that sheet. You do have to subtract the thickness of one sheet from the adjacent side, otherwise they will overlap. I went through this a bit before in that video where I drew all the di I mean, circles and slots. I'll link to that video in the description. It is tedious, but usually pretty quick if you just sit down and do it. If you have a more complex shape, you usually want to put tabs in a few places to keep everything located. You just sort of add a little tab to one side and cut it out of the adjacent side with a little extra gap. I'm not going to do that on this pan because it's such a simple shape. It's mostly 90 degree corners and nothing is critical, so we'll do it the easy way. If I was doing this again, I would change one thing. This kind of junction here makes for a weld that is not great and not great looking. It's a lot better if you do a corner to corner like this and then fill this with weld. I will usually overlap it slightly since it's easier to piece together. I knew this, so I don't know why I didn't do it on this pan, but my welds did suffer. Anyway, more on that later. There are a couple of difficult welds on this pan, and that's where this tube intersects the rest of the pan. I need a good clean weld all the way around it, but I can't do that because I can't get to the inside of the tube. So, I just did a couple of cutouts. That way I can weld up the tube all the way around and then weld a patch plate inside to seal up the cutout. For the flange, you can cut it out in one large piece, but it gets expensive. It's a lot cheaper if you do it in a bunch of small sections. And if you're welding up all of this anyway, you might as well weld together some flange pieces. You will have to grind down the welds, but you won't need a perfectly flat surface because Honda Bond will fix anything. There are usually two materials that you'd want to make an oil pan out of, mild steel and aluminum. Aluminum is great if you're worried about weight, if you're building a race car, for instance. Steel is the less expensive alternative, great for something like an off-road Viper, for instance. I chose stainless. Stainless is not the correct answer to this equation, but we don't know that yet. Right now, stainless seems like a great choice. It's durable, it doesn't need a coating, it's reasonably easy to weld, and it's shiny. Also, if I scrape it over a rock in the desert, it doesn't matter. Steel and aluminum will expand differently as they heat up, so it's usually best to keep the same material you have for your engine block. This is one area where stainless does make sense for an aluminum block. The 304 stainless that I'm using has a coefficient of thermal expansion very close to the cast aluminum that you find in engine blocks. Since I'm cheap and I got the flange in six separate pieces, we need to weld them together, and the easiest way to do that is to bolt them up to the old oil pan. I did need to be a little careful with the weld since I don't want to warp or melt the aluminum pan, but the welds were small, so no problem there. We'll need to clamp it down to a flat surface for the final weld, but before that, I need to weld up the sheets to make a pan. Again, this junction makes for mediocre welds, but also this type of torch setup is not great for stainless. You usually want a more even flow of gas over a larger area. For that, we use one of these. I haven't welded very much stainless, so it started rough, but as I got farther along, the welds started to look okay. I didn't get this part bent by Send Cut Send, they do have that service, but I always like to do it myself, just to kind of fine tune it. I had slots cut in these three parts so they would nicely nest together. Very nice. 
The tube needs that joggle in it. I was originally going to heat it up with a torch and bend it, but I knew it would be easier to just cut it and weld it, so I did that. I cut out some metal for the corners, welded it all up, and welded it into the pan. And right about the time I finished welding it in, I realized something important. So you all know how I'm sometimes kind of not paying attention to things. I sort of miss the finer details. Well, here's a fun thing that happened. After I sent off the parts to be laser cut, I ordered a one inch square tube of stainless steel and when it arrived, I put it on my shelf of random metals. Then when it came time to bend and weld the tube on the oil pan, I took it down, cut it, bent it, and welded it to the oil pan. And pretty much right after it was all welded in, I grabbed the rest of the tube to put it back in the pile of metal, noticing this label. That's right, I grabbed the wrong tube. It's not stainless. All this pan is stainless, except this part right here. <sighs> it's not the end of the world. You can weld stainless and mild steel. The pan will be fine. I should have made this whole pan out of mild steel. There is no reason for this to be stainless. Actually, I should have made it out of aluminum. I'm always reluctant to make things from aluminum because it's tough to weld, but I'm starting to realize that it was only tough to weld with my previous welder, which sucked at welding aluminum. With my new welder and a few hours in welding class, it's actually pretty easy. You know, if I wasn't making a video on this, if nobody was ever going to see this pan, I wouldn't have used stainless. So this is kind of your fault. The old pan had a screen at the pickup. Pretty much all oil pickups have a screen because the oil goes to the pump before it goes to the filter. So if something falls into the pan, the screen will keep it in the pan instead of sucking it up into the pump and doing this. I can't really reuse this screen, so I looked around and bought a few stainless steel screens. This is what I ended up using. It's originally designed for one of these filters. It's stainless, it's about the right size, and it has a mesh density about the same as the original. So I smashed one side flat and welded it up. Then I welded the other side to a flange that I then welded inside the pan. This part is also mild steel, but we've already made that mistake, so we're going with it. These welds do not look pretty. The material at the end is super thin, but I wanted a good solid weld on it, so it looks like a melted turd. Unfortunately, with all the welding, the pan flange did not stay flat. Austenitic stainless steels like the 304 I used are prone to warping during and after welding, which means that the nice flat top of my pan is neither nice nor flat. That means I have to make it flat. If I had used mild steel, it would have been less of a problem. If I had used aluminum, I could easily use my router to face it flat. But no, I had to use stainless. Like an idiot. I set up the mill and started cutting off material. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it held securely in the mill, so it chattered really bad and gave a horrible surface finish. It was at this point that I gave up on the stainless pan. I decided to design an aluminum pan, one with proper corner geometry, a tube that was the correct material, and a flange that would not only not warp as much, but also could be easily fixed. Unfortunately, the stainless pan would not fit in my trash can, so I guess we'll have to make it work. I went to the hardware store and made myself a structure to hold everything secure and stiff, and then I resurfaced the whole thing, which still chattered a little bit because, for some reason, I'm cutting stainless. Before I install the oil pan, it seems like it might be a good idea to check it for leaks, and the easiest way to do that is to pressurize it with air and spray the welds with soapy water. I could cut out a piece of metal or perhaps even wood and clamp the pan to it with a rubber or RTV gasket, but since I still have the old pan, I just use that. I made an adapter for the drain plug using a bolt and a Schrader valve, and I bolted it together. Immediately, I noticed leaking around the drain plug. I actually thought this might be an issue since it was difficult to get weld all the way around this. No worries, I'll try again. I was more worried about this leak here. My tube junction to the flange was leaking. I thought this might be because I milled the weld too far in on the patch plate, or maybe I just didn't get a good perimeter weld. This is not good, because I can't really get to the back of this weld anymore since I welded on that patch plate. So I just sort of added some more weld around it, hoping I would maybe fill the pinhole. I guess I could just fill this area back here with RTV or something. But as I was putting it back together to pressure test it, I realized that this passageway is offset, so it's on opposite sides, meaning that the gasket only seals one side when the two sides are bolted together. So I flipped the gasket over so that it would seal the new pan, and then I pressurized it again, and you can see here there is no leaking around the tube, and there is on the old oil passage pan. Probably should have realized this before, but the theme of this oil pan seems to be hindsight. We'll just call it that. Hindsight the oil pan. I also decided to add a little loop here using stainless filler so I can safety wire the oil plug in place. Before I install this, I do need to trim this windage tray a little bit. I did a test fit to double check how much it needs to be trimmed. In order to make this pan easier to build, I designed it to extend a little bit farther than the original pan. That's why this pan has these indents for the fasteners, but my new one doesn't. This shouldn't affect anything, I hope. 
And now we must paint the steel. Before that, I'm going to clean up the stainless a little bit. I could just paint the whole pan. In fact, I probably should, but I put so much effort into the stainless that I refuse to do that. I will paint only what I need to paint and nothing more. It's about time for the little rubber flappy doohickeys. We'll just shove these in the little slots, making sure they're pointing the correct way. And I also need to add the baffle in. The original baffle was bolted into the pan. I could probably weld in some threaded bosses, but I'm just going to tack weld it in place. If I ever need to remove this baffle, I will either cut these welds with a Dremel, or I will throw the whole pan in the dumpster and make a new one. We will cross that bridge when we get there. After that, it is a simple bolt-in install. And there it is. It might not be the best oil pan, but it will do the job. Under the car. And we will never speak of this again. Thanks for watching.